Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated. I have a new NFT drop happening in an hour. I also have a few time-sensitive pieces that are currently up for sale for those of you who are interested. There is a link in the description below. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, the cryptocurrency market looks a little weird. At least at the time of me making this video, the entire market is desperate to move up in price. But for some reason, Bitcoin is going sideways down, if that makes any kind of sense. We closed bullish. The news that we had at the end of last week is that Bitcoin had to close, I believe, above 39000 above $40,000 to indicate that we were back again in some bullish momentum, stock to flow kind of thing going on. I think Bitcoin closed at 41,500 or somewhere around there. But for some reason, the last five or six hours, uh, Bitcoin has actually fallen by 5%. If you look at the charts, at least at the time of me making this video, the other altcoins have barely fallen. Typically what we see is, if normally Bitcoin falls by 2%, altcoins tend to fall by 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12%. Not a joke, it's just what happens. However, Bitcoin has fallen by 5%. A lot of the altcoins have fallen by 1%. You can even see them actually sloping down slightly, and they're already trying to go back up immediately after. I think this is going to be a very, very, very interesting week. There is a lot of discussion about the stock to flow model and how we are back on track and how we actually didn't lose track of it when we went to 29,000 as the stock to flow adds for discrepancies in prices as well. There is an enormous, an enormous, an enormous amount of Ethereum news right now. We are two days away from the upgrade happening, depending on where you look at the news. I've seen it from different websites in different parts of the world. The upgrade is going to happen on the 4th of August. This is also the 5th of August in, in some places in the world, so sometimes you'll see both numbers floating around. It says why Ethereum could continue to outperform Bitcoin. This is everywhere. It's all over the place. Everyone's talking about it. We're getting a lot of news once again about a flippening. That is to say, not only are Ethereum's metrics stronger than Bitcoin, but Ethereum itself ends up becoming the number one coin. This is, I, I mean, I, I can't understate exactly how, how every, how every, how over the place it actually is. It says Ethereum price leaps to 2,600 ahead of the London hard, hard fork. Ethereum price surpasses 2,600 while Bitcoin growth slows down. Uh, I only have three tabs up here just to show you that the news is actually taking place. But I mean, you don't understand how every single website is talking about this. And a lot of them are pushing it rather aggressively as well. Basically talking about that this is Bitcoin's end. This is Bitcoin's demise. I do not think in any way, shape or form that this is Bitcoin's demise. But I do think for the... I want to say one, two, or three months, unless Bitcoin really gets it together, Ethereum is going to continue to outperform Bitcoin. And at the same exact time, this is also great for everyone else, regardless if you like Ethereum or not, if you have love for another coin. If Ethereum does well, the entire altcoin market does well as well. So you should also be uh, not even placing your bets, but also just hoping uh, that this all goes down well. On top of that as well, there's also some other like random altcoin news. You have stuff like XRP's price to hit $1. But when? Ripple price action seems bullish. A breakout is expected soon. There's a lot of discussion around the lawsuit between Ripple and the SEC. There are a lot of articles where you can even hear, and I think also YouTube videos, where you can hear from lawyers who understand the case and they're telling you what took place or what went down or what somebody said. We'll see what happens. I, um, I'm, I'm waiting for XRP to pass by $1 simply for one reason. I believe there was an article by some cryptocurrency website. This was months ago. I mean, like four or five, six months ago. Uh, who wrote so proudly that XRP will never pass by $1 again. And I actually collect articles like that. I find them absolutely fantastic because they just never make any sense. Remember the news that we also had? This was sometime... It wasn't the beginning of this year. It's, it took place sometime within our lifetime. I know that's a very huge stretch, but it's somewhere around it. I mean, like the last six, seven months where Bitcoin had dropped in value 
there was an article that said like it was something along the lines of Bitcoin has to hit twelve thousand, or, or Bitcoin is 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 entering total collapse and and will never go past thirty thousand dollars. It, it was something very very stupid. And then of course Bitcoin passed by thirty thousand dollars again, and I think I took a screenshot of it and posted it on my Twitter. This was months ago. I, I, I don't know why people would write articles like that as if these coins are never, ever going to recover. There were also a lot of them when, e when Ethereum uh, fell down last year and hit $200. There were a lot of like, Ethereum will never pass by $1,000 again. I'm like, what, what metrics are you looking at to write something so stupid? Anyway, that's all the price news that we currently have right now. Once again, I'm, I'm expecting a very weird week. I'm expecting the upgrade to happen. I'm expecting a huge amount of people to try and do that whole sell the news kind of thing for Ethereum, not really understanding that institutions and wealth managers and, and even normal people understand what it means to actually own Ethereum at this point, especially as the supply continues to get burned. Uh, so just expect some price fluctuations, a lot of movements upward and some other wacky things along the way. That's the price news. And without further ado, let's move on. Some of these are going to be slight news I missed. Did this? Wow. Some, usually on the weekend, you know, I, I do news I missed. I was incredibly busy yesterday. I couldn't actually make a, a Sunday edition, if you will, of news I missed. So a lot of it is in here as well. It says Kraken paid out more than $100 million in staking rewards to customers in the first half of this year. The crypto exchange reported on Monday, as analysts predict the staking industry is expected to boom in the next several years. Proof-of-work coins like Bitcoin are generated by using machines competing to solve equations against each other, but proof-of-stake works differently by choosing from a pool of people holding a coin, giving them validators a source of income without needing powerful mining hardware. It's just easier for nearly everyone. Staking allows users to maximize holdings and staking coins and fiat that would otherwise be sitting in a Kraken account. Um, year to date, the total number of assets staked on Kraken has jumped to one billion, from $1 billion to nearly $5 billion. The firm announced as clients took for new innovative ways to earn money on their crypto wealth. This is going to get very, very big. And I think currently this is just, this is not a, a prediction. This is more of a, a logic uh, it, it appears that the largest ones are going to be the coins that we currently have right now. I'm wholeheartedly expecting a JP Morgan Chase, a Bank of America, even a Kraken coin at some point to come out. Or basically, um, did I say Amazon or Kraken? I think I was looking at the actual Kraken arms. I don't remember. Uh, one of these things to actually come out at some point to offer staking as well in that They'll see the popularity of Cardano and the popularity of Ethereum for staking. And I know there are many other coins. I don't know all the other thousands of other staking coins. Uh, basically, there's going to be a corporation coin at some point that's going to tell people, hey, you can't get this money from your local bank. Use our coin to buy our products and also to stake with us so that you can make money to then reuse to buy products with us. I, I, I can feel... That is going to happen, but the staking industry is going to be absolutely massive, and this is why I think we're also seeing a huge run-up in coins like Cardano and like Ethereum as well, because people want to be able in the future. Like the and once again, I know that I'm, there's always one person. I know there's somebody out there who actually loves working. God bless your heart and soul, and I find that wonderful for you. But for the other 99% out there, nobody really wants to work anymore. Everybody kind of wants to sit on an island or even sit at home eating nachos, just kind of relaxing and enjoying their life. Uh, staking is going to be absolutely incredibly big as we go forward. We also heard this from JP Morgan Chase. They expect it to be a multi-billion dollar uh, asset class in itself uh, from staking. Yeah, it says it right here. $40 billion by 2020. That's that's incredible, especially as we <laughs> as we are still in the early stages of the cryptocurrency space. Anyway, that's the staking news. And I only wonder if this is all this is just the the crack in staking news. This isn't the does Gemini offer staking? This isn't the Binance staking news. This isn't the the Coinbase staking news as well. I have a friend who got into crypto. I mean, she got into it years ago. I, I I think I physically held her on the street and and shook her being and told her like, please, please buy some crypto. And she did. She I don't think she watches my videos, but hello. Uh, she recently found out that the, the coins I, I told her to buy many moons ago is now worth around 50K. Not joking. This actually did happen. Uh, and she messaged me last night and she's like, what's staking? And I explained it to her 
and now she's staking her coins as well. So, yeah, it's it's going to get absolutely huge. Anyway, that's the staking news. And let's move on. I don't know if you've realized or not, but NFT news has begun to re-explode back again in popularity, especially over the last like two weeks or so. I'm not really sure what lit the fuse, if you will, but there's something absolutely major happening right now. It says Ethereum whales have once again taken charge of pushing the prices higher. However, this time it's not an Ether, but for crypto punk NFTs where they are pouring their money. The whale purchases, this, this article is written absolutely terribly, forgive me. Uh, the point is, is that a large number of NFTs have begun to like once again skyrocket in price. Uh, there was a wallet that was created, I believe, last week uh, where somebody put $6 million into one of these, these, these crypto punks. Uh, they were already selling for half a million, $1 million dollars. Uh, one of them recently sold, went from 24 Ether to 29 Ether. And I, I find it really funny because when you hear that, it's not a single digit number, but you understand, you know, 24 Ether, it just sounds almost like $24 until you realize what Ethereum's actual price is. Uh, these wallets were created exclusively just to get these NFTs. This news is all over the place. Uh, this guy, Gary V, has been in the news very a lot recently. Uh, talking about his recent NFT purchases, and he paid $3.7 million for a CryptoPunk NFT. Uh, ba -ba -ba. This one was also in the news over the weekend as well. Uh, Steve Jobs' job application from, I assume, it says 1973, so I assume he was a lot younger. Uh, sold as an NFT. I think there was a physical copy and an NFT copy. I think the physical copy sold for 200 and something odd other thousand dollars, and the NFT version sold for nearly 30000 but the energy is around that somebody paid thirty thousand dollars for the digital version of his, uh, I think his only job application. I think that's kind of the the story floating around it. There's a lot of NFT news, and I am not once again not really sure what kind of brought it back into the mainstream. But NFT prices are really really surging. A lot of people are making uh, really good money on them once again. It says NFTs are a game changer for independent artists and musicians it says has crypto entered an nft summer a lot of the nft platforms are doing extremely well once again i i think this is generally has to do with crypto market prices moving back up we are in this is you know i i don't know uh, but we are currently at the moment where it looks like we have re-entered the previous bullish phase where we were just about two or three months ago and this is kind of reigniting uh, the drive for digital assets across the board, especially, and I assume we'll only see more of this if Ethereum continues to rise higher and if Bitcoin ever actually gets it together, because Bitcoin's really weird in pricing, but that's something else, but, you know, but, but besides it entirely. And on top of that as well, it says Shopify will let its users sell NFTs in its storefronts. Uh, it says the e-commerce platform is initially supporting an offering from the Chicago Bull, so I assume within the next couple of months, people on Shopify will be able to list their own NFTs as well. That's only some of the NFT news. There was actually a lot more, but I decided to not burden you with 20 minutes of me talking about it. But there's definitely a resurgence back in the air. I assume we're going to start hearing some really crazy prices once again, with pieces selling for 35, 45, you know, 50 uh, Ether like they were selling before. Okay, that's all the NFT news. <laughs> that's some of the NFT news. And yeah, let's move on. Next up, Kazakhstan has recently attracted the attention of the cryptocurrency world in recent months as one of the biggest destinations for block reward miners that have been forced out of China amid regulatory crackdowns. Uh, for those of you who don't know, this was two or three months ago at this point. It seems like it's been so much longer, but there's always China news floating around. Uh, China, even, even I think a day ago, there was some news that China is going to continue their regulatory crackdown. And it's like, dude, no one actually cares at this point. Like literally no one cares. Uh, but at this time, when all these people have been told to turn off their Bitcoin mining machines, Kazakhstan has been kind of the biggest destination that people have gone to besides like Alaska and Iceland and stuff like that. It says now the Kazakhstan government has allowed banks to offer services to crypto companies, including crypto exchanges. In a pilot project, Kazakhstan is seeking to make a crypto crypto investment mainstream 
to attract investment from the global community as well as enhance protection for its local investors. The Asian country has seen a rapid rise in digital currency adoption recently. The authorities are seeking to enhance access to financial services for the industry. The Kazakh Association of Blockchain and Data Center Industry earlier confirmed that exchanges that register with the Astana International Finance Center would be able to work with local banks. I, I think Kazakhstan is, is positioning itself to be a very rich country in the future. For some reason, there is still a lot of push against the cryptocurrency industry. And I think at this point, I think it's trying to like really trying to push a mountain. Uh, there are, I don't know if I have it in this video. I think, yeah, there's one of them. It's, um, it's Ghana, Nigeria, and another country in Africa who are like really adamant about people not being able to access anything crypto. The banks can't use it. The people can't touch it. You can't so and so and so, but behind the scenes, people are still definitely finding a way to get into the market. But we also, we are in the same exact time, we're also seeing very few countries like actually really adopting it. And what ends up happening is, is that if everyone knows that they're safe in your country and they can move their money to your country and their taxes are going to be zero or even 5% over the course of the year in cryptocurrency, well, buddy, they're going to move to that country instead. So not, once again, not the most exciting news for the, those of you out there, but it's this kind of a... Uh, uh, really heavy adoption that really kind of not only pushes us forward, but allows other countries to become rich in the process. Like what was the news that we had uh, about two weeks ago uh, from El Salvador? It was like uh, the, the the country plans on mining Bitcoin. They plan on using geothermal energy. And I think over the course of a year, they, they get like, what was it? Like four or five billion dollars worth of Bitcoin. And it's like, that's huge. Like that's money that they would not have had coming in before. As the adoption curve continues in that country, more people will move there as they see that their other countries are not friendly. It's just a really weird... I don't I don't understand how you could be afraid of money or try to make sure that money doesn't enter your borders. It's just a really weird thing. And here's the actual news story for it right here. I cannot understand the language, but alas, I assume it has to do with it because that's the link. Anyway, that's the Kazakhstan news. <laughs> and let's move on. Next up in news that was it was th th this news was really pushed forward a lot but it's not what it actually sounds like according to Dr. Mahamadou Bawumia uh, employing digital currencies in the country would restore the trade sector the vice president of Ghana opened that embracing cryptocurrencies would be beneficial for the trade sector of the African continent he believes the digitization is the tool that will help the economies revive after the consequences of 19. During the fifth Ghana International Trade and Finance Conference in the capital of Accra, the nation's vice president argued that African countries should embrace virtual currencies to boost trade and strengthen other productive sectors of the economy. On top of that, they would increase financial activities, establish macroeconomic stability, and promote growth. Uh, when you look around, this news was pushed very heavily at the end of last week as kind of like a, wow, I can't believe... The president, the vice president of Ghana would say something so amazing like that. Uh, no, he's talking about central bank digital currencies. This is why I, yeah, uh, exactly. It, it shows like um, nearly every article said like embrace digital currencies. Uh, but there's a huge coalition of countries right now. And I think the U.S. also said something like eight hours ago. Someone in the U.S. said something eight hours ago. We're basically like, hey. We got to hop to it and we got to have central bank digital currencies within the next like year or so because they see that the cryptocurrency space is going to completely devour the the current economic world that we have right now. Um, not once again the most exciting news, but you have to understand that we are currently in a digital tug of war. And I mean that in the most literal sense. Uh, they know that as the popularity of cryptocurrencies once again decentralized immutable things that you can use and have been buying right now continue to grow in popularity by the time we get to the year 2028 fiat currency will have actually i mean there will be no point in owning any type of fiat currency anymore and this is why they're trying so desperately to digitize because once again they assume that the need is by the people just to have a digital currency when that's not it at all, as such trying to get away from the old system because the old system is absolutely terrible. Over the course of the week, I think it's two days ago, I watched um, uh, The Big Short once again. If you've never seen that movie, please go watch it because it's just, it's really, it's odd how nothing has really changed 
how things are exactly the same and how it is abundantly clear that the stock market should not be as high as it is. Uh, all asset prices are, are inflating, not only because of actual uh, US dollar inflation, but also because so many of these things are actually currently in a bubble right now. And the thing that's going, and this is just to talk kind of candidly, as I mostly do sometimes, uh, a lot of this stuff was told to me many years ago, like this was predicted that the stock market would continue to go up, but all the money that's being forced into it is not real money. $120 billion per month to keep asset prices looking like they're healthy. When all these things completely collapse and fall back down, the only answer is going to be for people to move their money into cryptocurrencies. And this is why I think even right now we see so many companies and hedge funds like really buying as much as humanly possible because they know that a fall is going to come. You cannot have a 13-year bull market in a, in a system that already should have collapsed in 2007 and 2008 but continued to uh, float because governments... Anyway, so, so that's the that news. Uh, there's a lot of these floating around. They, some of them also really almost caught me because a lot of the titles of these things were like, this country says digital currencies are the wave of the future. And then you read it. No, they're talking about a central bank digital currency because the International Monetary Fund told them to say these things. And basically, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure multiple countries were put into a room and they were like, if any of you decide to do anything that we don't say, you're going to be in trouble because that's how money works. Anyway, that's that news. Let's move on. Now, to be completely honest, I can't really differentiate between these two. I think we went over one of these a couple of days ago, but I really can't honestly tell the difference. On Thursday, the Paulo Alto-based auto investment firm service known as Wealthfront eh, announced that customers can now get exposure to crypto assets via the company's platform. The firm revealed that clients can now choose between Grayscale's Ethereum Trust and the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust. This week, Wealthfront has added two Grayscale crypto funds, or tr trust to the fund. Wow. Trust to the firm's menu of investments. None of those words were there. Uh, Wealthfront is an automated investment operation, sometimes referred to as a robo-advisor, that offers wealth management services. And then on top of that, there's also something that sounds almost similarly exactly the same. The hedge fund Golden Tree. So we have... Wealthfront and Golden Tree patting themselves on the back. A firm with $41 billion in assets under management has reportedly added Bitcoin to its balance sheet. Unnamed sources detail that the American asset management firm leveraged Bitcoin to diversify from traditional debt investment strategies. The wealth management firm allegedly has been looking for staff that understands blockchain technology. And it's possible... Golden Tree is circulating distressed businesses within the crypto industry. A recent report stemming from the street says the mega hedge fund Golden Tree has purchased Bitcoin. The author of the report, Michael Bodley, did not reveal the unknown source because it's a source. They're usually unknown sources don't reveal themselves because this is why they're unknown sources. A source disclosed that executives at Golden Tree are looking into employing staff that understands crypto solutions and blockchain tech. So I think we went over one of them. I can't really remember which one because we get news like this every single day. And I, it's impossible for me to remember all the names of these different uh, companies that have golden and money and, and, and we are rich in their name. Here's the actual um, article right here from the street about Golden Tree. Uh, is anyone surprised? No, you shouldn't be because this happens literally every single day. Uh, so Cool. Yeah, rich people are still buying. They're giving their clients access to Bitcoin in some sort of way. This is only going to continue. Uh, the last big dominoes to fall are the banks. And the banks are accumulating right now for themselves. And they won't offer it to anyone normal until they know that prices are way too high for these people to be able to accumulate an entire Bitcoin anymore. Because that's how it works. Yeah, anyway, that's the rich people buying Traffic light, Wall Street, news, manager, news. And let's move on. Next up, Cardano Wallet, Yoroi, Yororori. 
Does anyone? No, no, no. Actually, I, 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 I just answered my own question. I was gonna ask. Does anyone know why Cardano uses these names? And I think they're the names of like uh, famous mathematicians and stuff like that. But I can't, I can't pronounce any of them. And and then and then people will scream at me in the comment section, and they're like, "It's pronounced Kabugula. And I'm like, "I don't. I still can't pronounce it because you're writing it on the screen." Cardano Wallet, your Roy, your Rory, is launching a decentralized application connector. That will make it easier for users to interact with smart contracts and these applications once they go live on the Cardano network. During a blog post published by Emergo, one of the founding entities of Cardano, Cardano's full potential is now coming into realization as the current Alonzo upgrade signifies the integration of smart contracts in the near future. Alonzo refers to a hard fork that goes part of the network's Galgen era, named after Joseph Galgen, uh, an American professor of computer science from the University of California and the University of Oxford. Fancy. The Galgen era comes after the Shelley phase in which Cardano becomes a decentralized blockchain and community members become validators. A lot of the news is, is that so saith the internet. Uh, this will happen by the end of this month, and this is why I think we're seeing a lot more Cardano articles as well. There's also something around here. Uh, the upgrade will also include a converter to allow ERC-20 tokens from the Ethereum blockchain to run on Cardano as well. If all of this goes off without a hitch, I think we're going to see major, and I mean like really ridiculous price movements for Cardano. It's kind of, it's basically crunch time. It is currently the 2nd of August. We are seeing the upgrades for the two most popular and well-known uh, smart contract NFT DeFi blah, 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 staking platforms uh, currently taking shape in the exact same month. I think Ethereum's price will do extremely well. And at the same exact time, if we get these actual upgrades for Cardano. And I mean, if you have something that allows you to convert ERC-20 tokens onto a, a quicker network, at least for the next year, which is going to be Cardano, and we have smart contracts and DeFi, and we are allowed to have NFTs. I, I read something a day or two ago about some NFT platform that's also being built on top of Cardano as well. Cardano's price is going to do extremely well. I, I think the weirdest price prediction that I saw so far for Cardano, I'm sure you can find it. Someone was talking about like a $25 Cardano during this run. I think $10 is a definite possibility. A friend of mine really, really thinks we're going to see a $32 Cardano. Uh, if so, I'm going to build a time machine and I'm taking you all with me so we can go back to last year when it was like 20 cents just so we can fill up as much as possible. But there's so much energy around all these upgrades. And I, and I think it's also a perfect time to do it as well. Because as we move into move heavily into quarter four, this is when the cryptocurrency market is expected to really kind of like skyrocket, if you will, in price. So uh, let's see what, what happens. I'm, I'm, I'm quite optimistic for all of it. Uh, and to finish things off, it says the Bitcoin Fear and Greed Index is back to greed. For the first time in 12 weeks, I think everyone can smell the money in the air. I think we all know that it's there. I think we know that the, the price movements uh, should not be as low as they currently are. We should be a lot higher in price across the entire market. There was some photo that I saw on Instagram uh, sometime yesterday when I was bored and just scrolling through my phone. It mentioned, I, I think, where Ethereum's price was in 2017, and it showed like basically nothing next to it. It was kind of like... Uh, the, the, the whole ICO hype. And then it showed 2021, I think with the price being in like 2,200, so it was like 400 or 500 more than where it was in 2017. And all the things that have happened since then, all the upgrades, all the people who are buying, all the new valid, I mean, you know, the, the, the whole spectrum of it. And it was basically like Ethereum should be at least $15,000 right now. Uh, because the the amount of adoption in this space, e even for Bitcoin's price, even ha having a sixty thousand dollar Bitcoin is absolutely nothing compared to. Think of all the companies and countries, and banks and institutions who we know are buying Bitcoin. Seven percent, seven percent, seven percent of Bitcoin supply is left for people to get on cryptocurrency exchanges. It's the year twenty twenty one. By 2025, 
Bitcoin's price is going to be so astronomically high, and, and I assume the number will be far less than 7%. Imagine that. The entirety of, of Bitcoin supply, only 7% is left on actual exchanges. We are about to see the most popular blockchain on the planet that has thousands of apps, thousands of websites, thousands of other things on it, start burning the coins that it's actually creating. Our prices are extremely, 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 extremely low right now. And I just hope once again that everyone bought the last dip. As always, this is what I'm talking about right here. Bitcoin, I don't know what Bitcoin is doing, but it's the it's, it's same exactly. Remember a day or two ago where um, XRP really shot up? It was the only coin that was shooting up and Bitcoin an hour later, I mean, slammed down slammed down in price which brought the entire market down with it but i was like the, the 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 timing is incredibly odd that you're doing it as xrp is the only coin is is the only coin moving up in the last couple of hours as well like what is this movement downward who sold that much bitcoin at one time to try and move the market down you see like it, of course it has an effect on it bitcoin barely moved up by a smidge and the other coins are already really trying to pump a lot higher because it, it's time like there's no whoever is doing this to bitcoin Get get your life together because the market will move on without you. Uh, Professor Wally from Gunbot University, Empire Queen, Stake It with Valor, Fud Wiser, Mortified, Roman Geba, Bitcoin Ben, Arachno Dave, Tony Ambrosky, The Dealers Den, Red Plump Tomato, Umnu, Wishniki, The Letter M, Stefan Dirks, Not Brain, Captain Something in the Z Way Lay, Crypto Black Sheep, AJ Cut Five, Speedy Six Five Five. And Carlos was like, Mobarazi, Jojo Shaw Show, VB Nerd 21, Miguel Grolay, Lauren De Silva, Quoted Biddy, Bare Bones, Mining Troy, All Good, Space Case, Need a Miracle, Patrick Noster, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Snacky Chan, Tolik Banan, Auspicious Agile, and Blockchain, Navarro Williams, David James, Attila the Han, Yasha Harari, Utopia 569, Moonman High, XRP, Martin Stoyer, Nostromo, John Sarson, The Animal Reader, Ibib, The Animal Reader. Why did, why, what? Why did that just hit my head right now? What's an animal reader? I read that name like a thousand times. What's an animal reader? Like an animal whisperer? A bibliophobia, Todd Mullis, Adam Grasick, Moher Maroney, Mass Adventures in Thailand, Jared Schneider, Wise Knight Owl, 242 to the World, Bankroll Network, Crypto Artist, Coldy 3D, Damien, Setsuna, Richie Richard III, Vlandi Impaler, Paxes, Nick Mangialavori, Jim Gardner, Jeremy Fox, Minting Coins, Miller Hitch Test, Every Day, and Kyle Skips Leg Day. Yes to Crypto. Bodie McBoatface, <laughs> Anytime Fitness, Monks from his staff, Bake Me a Cake, Tigger Macho Nisa, on crypto with Lionel, Crayola Michelle, URL, and Bolero Bastos. Thank you all very, very much for your support. Thank you to everyone who is a member of the channel. Thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, or has subscribed. Thank you very much for all the NFT support. I really do. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if I told you in many other videos, like I love doing art. I love making art. It's one of my really uh, big things in my life, and I wasn't able to really do it as much uh, in the cryptocurrency space, but now I can finally do it through NFTs. I've been making art forever. Um, and a very big thank you to everyone who's still here listening to me ramble on. At the moment, Bitcoin is at $40,236. It is down by 3%, but you can tell that it's trying to go back up. If we have any type of a U-shaped recovery right here that'll be absolute nonsense because that was someone trying to push everyone else out of the market into lower prices once again ethereum is at two thousand six hundred and twenty eight dollars it is up by 1.3 percent all the other coins are in red because of bitcoins falling down however they are desperate to move back up polka dot is up by one percent uniswap is up by one i think nothing spectacularly up is happening right now but okay luna is up by seven FTT is up by 3%. Yep, that's it for now. We'll see what happens as the day goes on. I'm expecting a I mean I mean a, a huge amount of energy as this week continues to go on. I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day. A great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.